ArtSpark Texas presents a community conversation with Joanne Stato. Here we are, uh, another community conversation. And uh, today we wanted to uh, welcome Joanne Stato, a <laughs> musician, songwriter, recording artist, who is our August Artist of the Month. Welcome, Joanne. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, you are currently in what what city and state? I'm in the Tampa Bay, Florida area. My town is called Safety Harbor. Oh, fabulous. I love that area. Yeah. Great. Um, okay, so um, you can wave at me across the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, okay, great. I'm only six miles from the Gulf, so just wave at me. I know you're inland, but you know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, to introduce myself, Susan Slattery with ArtSpark Texas. I'm the Director of Outreach, and um, I'm also going to introduce Eric Clow, who uh, is on this uh, event with us, this gathering. And uh, I understand that Eric had interviewed you and wrote a great blog. And so I'm going to let Eric do the very fancy introduction of you. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, uh, Joanne Seto has, um, you know, I had a chance to correspond with her and get to know that she started um, playing music at the age of five, which is pretty amazing. So that's some 60 years that you've been playing music. <laughs> Um, I don't know how, how long you've been writing songs specifically, but quite a number of decades I, I could would glean from um, what we talked about. Uh, and um, also as a regular at the Lion and Pirate open mic. So I think the first one that you might have joined us for was sometime in mid-2020, uh, uh, in the midst of the pandemic when we went virtual. And so it was so great to have you join us and um, was one of the one of the great perks well not i don't know one of the silver linings of a pandemic i would say and i know that joanne has has a, a number of those in terms of how the pandemic was able to sustain your songwriting or give new life to your songwriting by giving you a space to work on that um but anyway she has a great cd out it's called talking to myself it's on you know apple music and spotify and all those things and since the pandemic started, she's written um, about 20 songs, I think, which is really great. Um, so anyway, I um, kind of wanted to ask Joanne some questions while we're here, um, and uh, then she'll play some songs and we'll get to a songwriting activity at some point. Um, but if you could start, can you just start by kind of introducing yourself and giving us like the broad overview of Joanne's life okay, <laughs> at a I'll glance? Try. and in I'll two try. minutes or so um, well or or focus on uh on sort of your relationship to music how that's kind of unfolded throughout your life okay um well as you mentioned uh, around the age of five we had a piano and i used to plink out tunes by ear you know i would listen to records of broadway show tunes and plink them out on the piano so i always did that and then when i was eight i got to take accordion lessons which was fun um, and I actually learned to read music on the, you know, for the accordion. I was actually pretty good, but I've lost it all. You know, that was, those were the days. But um, and then when the Beatles happened, I guess I was I think I was in the seventh grade. And that's really when my musical consciousness really started. And I just really loved them so much. I wanted to be a songwriter. I wanted to play the guitar. And um, then I. I eventually went off to high school and um, had a lot of fellow Beatle maniacs. And when I got to college is when I actually started performing live and writing songs um, on the guitar and then on the piano. And after college, I moved to Colorado and that's when I really had a great music community and I was in several bands. Um, I kept writing songs. I was a singer, mostly played piano a little bit of mandolin. And um, then in the 80s, I was raising children and 
I really wasn't able to, you know, go at it night and go to coffee houses or whatnot, but I started doing children's music and working in summer camp. So I, you know, kept doing music. And eventually I got back to, you know, live performance and kept on writing. And then I moved to Baltimore where um, actually I see my, my fellow songwriter, Adam Book has joined us. He's uh, my good close friend that lives in Maryland. And um, we were in a really great songwriting support group called the Baltimore Songwriters Association in the late 90s and the 2000s. And um, so I had a lot of songwriter people in my community. And then I moved to Florida uh, in 2015 and kind of became a hermit until COVID and when I encountered the lion and pirate. And that was, uh, that really blew it wide open. That was just a wonderful uh, heart energy for me to meet kindred spirits and creative people. So here we are. Awesome. And um, yeah, I was curious, how many songs have you written? Do you have an idea? Life? In, in my your whole, whole life. life, yeah. Well, I started in around 1969 or 70, and I think I've probably written, oh, somewhere between 50 and 80 songs, maybe. I don't know if they're all keepers, but yeah. definitely, definitely 50 good ones, I would think. Nice. Yeah. Um, well, so in, in one of the interesting things uh, in talking to you as well was kind of seeing how you sort of have these uh, distinct kind of phases, right? You had the garage rock sort of band in uh in um in high school and then in college kind of started writing songs and then you did coffee shops and that sort of thing which is a really interesting kind of world and then um yeah and then you've kind of you know get embarked in the virtual world through covid um and uh so yeah another question i wanted to ask you is what to you um makes a great song what when you think of a great song, what 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 is a great song supposed to do in your mind? You mean someone else's song? Yeah. Oh, okay. Or it could be um, yours too. I mean, well, it could be. Yeah. Other. Well, I, I can I can just go through like the songwriters that I've loved through my life and what grabbed me. You know, like with the Beatles, it was just the musicality of it. You know, yeah. after to it, the harmony, and with um, Peter Paul and Mary, for instance, during the folk revival those songs had so much meaning and their harmonies just got you, you know, right in your heart. And then Randy Newman and Steely Dan, they're just so clever. You know, the things they say in their songs are just expressed in such a clever, original way. And plus the music was good. Um, and then Joni Mitchell, I don't even know how to describe Joni Mitchell, but she's been my, you know, my North star all through my music career, if you could call it a career just because everything she wrote was just so true. Um, and I always yearned to be able to express myself so beautifully like that. You know, I felt that way about Laura Nero also. It just gave me shivers. There, there are certain songwriters where you listen to them and they just give you shivers. Today on the radio, I heard Suzanne Vega. She's, I don't know if you've heard of her, but uh, there's a song Marlena on the Wall. And it just, I don't know, I was listening to it and I just thought, God, what a good song. It's really hard to answer your question, Eric. I don't oh, know yeah. it's a good song. It just, I just know it gives me shivers and I just have like a visceral reaction. And it feels yeah. like the best of all possible worlds to be there listening to that song. It seems like it's it's sort of uh, someone expressing truth is, is important to you. I mean- Miss yeah. um, Boy that... just, just wrote, um, just wrote Farron does that for her yeah me too miss boy definitely mm -hmm. yeah I, I i think it's uh yeah well for me it's it's uh being able to find that that somehow they express some truth for them that feels like it's truth for me you know uh yeah. where it's like you know i uh i don't know like joni mitchell i love her music and um like some of her songs like um, like uh, both sides now, you know, that song, like, I feel like she's singing about my life in that song, you know, um, I think a lot of the great songwriters do that. Um, that's great. And so um, this is another probably tough question, but what, what exactly does your songwriting process look like? Like, oh. I, I just, I'm always curious to know because my songwriting process is all over the place. It's totally random, but I wonder, I wonder if you have any kind of I, I have given this a lot of thought since you invited me to this 
conversation. So let me see if I can lay it out. Um, like, like what you just said, all of my life, my songwriting has been rather intuitive. Like I didn't have a definite template or method. It would just be an emotion that would grab me or an idea that would grab me or wanting desperately to communicate with another person and explain to them how I felt about something. And the best way for me to do it was to put it in a song. So there's that, but, um, I was thinking about it and I was analyzing some of my songs and I realized some of them are written in the third person, like talking about an event out there, people out there. Some of them are written in the second person talking directly to someone. And some of them are in the first person where I'm just telling a story about myself. So there's those three mm -hmm. kinds of songs. And the other thing that occurred to me was that, you know how there's um, visual description that they do for blind people so they can experience yeah, audio, a movie. Audio description, like, yeah. Well, yeah, audio description. Yeah, and sometimes, sometimes I've seen it called visual description. And, and I realized like everybody is kind of in their own movie. Like nobody knows what my movie is unless I can communicate it to them. So mm -hmm. um, writing a song is a way to show other people, you know, what my movie looks like, sort of. Yeah. <clears throat> But anyway, my, my process has been usually to start with a good phrase or a thought or something. And tonight in the, in the um, writing prompt, I'm going to focus on good opening lines. Cause to me, an opening line is the gateway into the song. If you've got a really good opening line. It'll lead you one foot in front of the other to what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. So then I, I find a musical uh, chord or riff or something and i just kind of it grows organically from here nice um well do you want to play uh one of your songs yeah actually what i'd like to do is play the first verse of two different songs to demonstrate two different things and then i'll play the whole song of a third song if that's okay sure yeah go for it okay, okay. so the first song the first song is an example of the third person where you're just talking about something out there that's happening and this was a technique I had never used before. Um, in, in 2021, the Oscar for Best Picture went to this movie called um, um, Nomadland. Nomadland. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I remember from um, your notes. So. Yeah. And I watched that movie at home on my computer, and it had such an effect on me that when I got to the end of it, I started at the beginning again, and I took notes, visual notes of the first few scenes. And then I use those notes to write the song. So basically, I, it's like I created a visual description of the first uh, few scenes in the movie. Yeah. So here's the here's the first uh, verse of that. It's called Nomad Land. One last pilgrimage to the storage unit. Before she leaves this place While the sky sprays bits of sleet around her head She's searching for the special dishes that her mother gave Rummages through a cardboard carton Finds his denim shirt, the one he loved best. She's trying to decide to leave it. But then she hugs it fiercely to her chest. She's in the bed. She's off to no So that's an example of that. And then the second great. song. Oh, sorry. Oh, I just said great. Okay. And the second song is um, an example of talking directly to someone. And this song came from a, 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 an experience. A friend of mine had an episode that landed him in a psychiatric ward. And this is, um, I wanted to communicate how I experienced that. <clears throat> it's called The Visiting Hour.
When I finally reached you on the phone, when I finally found some time alone in the office where I wondered if and how and where and why, because the nurses weren't allowed to say that you were brought to them today, so I had to call the payphone where the patients all played ping pong. But eventually you said to me, as the clouds cleared, I would finally see. Eventually, eventually, you said, I just want this pain to end. I just want this pain to end. This pain, this pain, this pain to end this pain. Still, I'm out here. I signed my name and rang the buzzer with a problem said relationship. I wrote significant other, and though you'll only go to see as we sit. In the day room, lean your head upon my shoulder. I won't leave until this is over. I will stay for the visiting hour. Hmm. Okay. And then uh, one more. This one. Uh, for sitting through all that serious stuff, this one's a little more lighthearted, so I'll play the whole song. <laughs> this one, um, <clears throat> this one's an example of a good first line that just kind of came to me by luck. And um, <clears throat> I was trying to open a jar and I couldn't open the jar. So that's how the song starts. It's called A Difficult Day. <laughs> Can't get the lid off the French and first jar, so I sit on the stoop and pretend to watch cars. The man that I love went off to see his mother with his other girlfriend in tow. It wouldn't hurt me so bad, but they got a discount like together, and I didn't even know, but now I feel like a fool. What else is there to say? But since you're kind enough to ask, yes, I mean, how would you like you feminist me all? A difficult day. I can't figure nothing out. That's how they talk around here. And I'm just a weak fisted Amazon. Okay, get the lids off of jars, I'm gonna live it alone. In love with someone who falls. He doesn't bother to lie, and I should bother to cry. But twist the Frenchman's lid off if I could. I'd make a scene if it would do any good, because I feel like a fool. What else is there to say? But since you're kind enough to ask, yes, I'm having what you might euphemistically call a difficult day. I always thought that muddy waters made too much of a fuss. Now I'm a white girl with a bona fide piece of the blues on Butcher's Hill waiting for the bus. I've never felt so bad. I've never been so low. I apologize, buddy. How was I to know that without trouble? Education comes slow, and you can tell a shoe woman by your skirt. She knows exactly where she can go. Because I feel 
like a fool. What else is there to say? But since you're piling up to ask, yes, I'm gonna have what you might do feministically call a difficult day. I need my bowl of wheat jerk. So again, so two percent low fat. But it's a working class neighborhood, and you relate to that. I ask these people for help. My ego's going to get hurt. All the men will think I'm handing them a pick up a line, and all the women will just smirk. I'll have to feel the rainbow stick. My car in disgrace and slink back into the house with a French star still acting out, and then I'll feel like a fool. What else is there to say? But since you're kind enough to ask, yes, I'm having what you might you feministic me call. A difficult day. It's just a difficult day. I'm having much in my euphemistic people. A difficult day. Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing those with us. Thank you. Yeah, I like I, I love that uh Woo! that last one I think really demonstrates your kind of um i don't know i guess i might call it deadpan humor but i don't know or maybe it's just dark kind of humor or Marty, um, sure. dry humor I, I don't know <laughs> what kind of humor you'd call that it's a kind of it's a sense of humor that i like i guess um but i like how you um how you create that like you use that very relatable situation of just trying to get the lid off of a jar and then use that as the as the vehicle for the song is really really cool, um, and uh, yeah, I think I I I find that same kind of uh, visual kind of using the what I the images to kind of guide the story along. A lot of times that's kind of how songs um, present themselves to me as a series of images, you know, just kind of describing the scene and um and i was going to say and i i think too that the other things that you bring up like first person second person third person um and i think the first one was the visual description that you were talking about i think that there are all kind of different tools to kind of just get started right i mean they're just different ways of you know it's like because i think we can kind of write ourselves into a wall sometimes or into a rut and sometimes just like changing, well, I've been writing a lot of I stuff, of first person stuff. Maybe I need to switch to second person and see what that does, you know. Um, but does that that does that feel like kind of it helps to freshen things up for you? Yeah, and it depends like what you need to say and how you need to say it. Like yeah. I have an, another example, not even gonna play it, but I I had a situation where um I felt like two people mistreated me and I felt oh. really bad about it. I felt like a victim, but I didn't want to write a song from a victim's point of view. So I wrote a song from the evildoer's point of view. <laughs> I kind of put myself in their shoes and how they must have felt about it. And that sort of relieved my self consciousness about me being the victim in the situation. So that was kind of an interesting experiment. Right on. Um, well, I was going to say real quick, are you planning to uh, record some of the newer songs that you've been doing? Yeah, yeah, I, I am, but um, I'm not ready because I, I don't feel, I think I said this to you before, I don't feel like they're alive yet because I haven't performed them mm, yeah, yeah. much, just, just over Zoom. I mean, not that Zoom isn't people, but I, I just feel like they need to age a little bit before I can really capture them in their best light. But yeah, I would love to, I really would. Yeah. Well, one things, I guess, when, you know, 
things mellow out with the pandemic, maybe I'll get the opportunity to, to get out there and play at some open mics or something like that. Um, yeah, I just found this amazing place in St. Petersburg, which is like 20 miles from here. It's a it's a group of creative people across the different media, and they have this space where they like they have this open stage where they have these extravaganzas where people play music and dancers and artists and everything. So I think I'm going to check that out. That might be just what I need. Awesome. Okay, well, I guess I'll let you uh, kind of guide us in a little songwriting activity. Okay, well, by way of introduction, I just listed some of my favorite first lines. So you might you might know some of these songs. Uh, you know, one of my favorite stories is that Joni Mitchell was quoted as saying that when she heard Bob Dylan's Positively Fourth Street, where he goes, you got a lot of nerve to say you are my friend. You know that song? Yeah. When, she heard him, when she heard him sing like that, it gave her permission to write lyrics that were more conversational. And I thought that was so fantastic. I just love that. Yeah. And then uh, let's see. Here's a here's a Steely Dan one. We we hear you're leaving. That's okay. Jefferson Airplane, White Rabbit. One pill makes you larger, and one pill makes you small. And and others. Um, okay. So here's a cartoon. Um, See if you can write a caption for this cartoon. Just write one line. Cartoon image. Inside of airplane full of passengers, Superman sits next to a man in a business suit who reads a book. Eric, okay. you, be the, you be the timekeeper. Eric. Oh, right. So we were doing this for 30 seconds? Whatever. You know, whatever you think is appropriate. Well, have people had time to write one line for this? Yeah, just one line, yeah. I know I haven't, but but if, if, anyone, if everyone else has finished. Um... Hello, Anna. Hello, Joanne. Hello, everyone. Sorry to be late. Oh. We're writing oh, no a worries. caption. We're writing a caption for this cartoon. Okay. I'm thinking that's probably enough time for people. I mean, uh, hey. for our, our creative ones. Okay. Ms. Boy or Susan, do you, or Nicole <laughs> or? I'm like, Adam? blank. <laughs> What did he say? All I can Susan? think is super you, super me. <laughs> oh, good. Well, we didn't we didn't say that it had to be a grammatically correct sentence, did we, Joanne? Uh -uh. No, whatever, no. whatever you got. Lay it on us. Um, I mean, I feel like what comes to mind to me is like the guy in the suit is saying, I, I thought you could fly. <laughs> <laughs> and the then Superman is saying. I got a deal that was cheaper than my chiropractor. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I joined late, my, what came to me was, would you kindly not read about kryptonite around me? <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> I, I had, um, I didn't want to mess up my hair. Oh. And then, and then I had a second one that said, "I wanted to take the scenic route." Oh, <laughs> out of that, I guess I don't. I guess it's more of a scenic route if you fly, right? I mean, like if you actually are flying. But anyway, yeah. What was that car company that said, uh, "Leave the driving to us"? You know, like sit back and leave the driving to us. Mm -hmm. I wrote. I asked for first class. Oh, nice. <laughs> I okay. think Superman would get it. Yeah, you would think. Okay, is it? Is that everybody? Mm -hmm. All did, right. Uh, did Adam want to share? I don't know if he's still oh. here. Is Adam still here? I don't know where he went. We lost him. He's there. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Adam, do you have a caption? Hi. I'm just going to say, uh, you look smart. Do you know how to open the window? <laughs> 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 All right. Very good. On to the next picture. Okay, so what, we're still in an airport here. What I want everybody to do is um, come up with an opening line for a lyric. Okay, so just you can pick any viewpoint you want. Just look at this picture and I'm trying to make the picture bigger. On, can everybody see that on their screen? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So maybe give everybody one minute. Or is that too long? 30 seconds? Whatever you think. 
Um, yeah. Uh, What's let's the assignment do, again? We're Come just going to write. Lyric. We're going to write a lyric that it's is just image. One line, just an opening line for a lyric. Photo in an airport terminal. People wait in line with their luggage at the checkout counter. Above them, a large board displays departure and arrival times. All right, I think we could start sharing around if someone's ready. I can share. Um, I said, who will I find waiting when I land? And when I wrote that, I was thinking not just like what person will be there to meet me in arrivals or something, but also what shape they'll be. I mean, what what they'll bring, what presence they'll bring, what what their how they show up, you know? And what, like was someone, your, what was your line again? Who will I find waiting when I land? Hmm. Who will I find waiting when I land? There's a lot of a lot of great places you could go with that. Uh -huh. that's, that's very pretty, but you know, simple line. Um, it could also be like, who am I going to be when I land? You know, like, will it be what version of me is going to get there? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, there's like, you know, kind of how it, it could be like an interesting refrain every time you revisit that idea, you know, it could be something different, you know, who will I find, you know, who will I be when, you know, um, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Who else? I'd um, stand in the longest line if you were the prize at the end. Oh, Ooh, isn't that sweet? Good one. Mm. I kind of looked at it um, because everybody, you know, you're just looking at the back of everyone. So I kind of let that be my guide. So I wrote, no looking back. I'm leaving now. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Nice. I wrote rolling bags and lots of feet. Mm. Uh -huh. Nice. Feet, yeah, I was thinking about feet. Oh, bags of lots of feet. And I also wrote, you're carrying too much stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that could be understood in many ways. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I wrote, everyone is going somewhere, but I didn't really finish my thought. I know there's there could be more to that line than that. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, great start. Or like maybe something like uh, uh, all I have is packed in this bag. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is is there a well? I'm thinking for time, Joanne. You want to go to the second part of this activity, yes. which was people can can kind of expand on one of these okay um well what i was going to do was go to the next picture and go to an opening line on that and then if we have time come back and do a second oh, okay line. all right that sounds, that, way? Oh, that, so sounds yeah, that sounds great okay so here's our next picture if I, I, I don't know if it's showing like it's not showing on my screen as big as i would like it can you guys see the whole picture no. Um, you might need uh, to zoom out just a little bit. How do you zoom out? You got uh, it. Near, near the you got bottom. It. You got it. I got the whole picture. Yeah, that's the whole yeah. picture right here. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. See what you can do with that. And what are we doing? You're writing a, a an opening line for a song. An opening line. Okay. Just like before. Yeah. Photo. A close-up view of a rescue effort in a rushing waterfall. A person underwater clings to an orange life preserver and reaches a hand out toward a man in a life jacket hanging from a chain and harness. He reaches his hand out to the person underwater. Cool. What do people think about sharing or do, do you need more time? 10 more yeah, seconds. I'm... 10 more yeah, seconds. That sounds good. Cool. It's a quite an evocative picture. Yeah. 
I can share what I wrote. Um, what came to me was ropes and floats and reaching out. You saved me when I felt all was lost. Oh, oh cool. So you Thanks. took the point of view of the person in the water. Yeah. Oh. I did the opposite. I, I took the, the rescuer's point of view and I, I said, my hand will be your bridge to what happens next. <gasps> oh, you know. Well, it's nice. a rhyme, but it's a start. I was kind of thinking the same lines, not quite like that, but uh, swept in the whitewash, you were reaching out your hand. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I, I have no experience with like these kind of rescues or natural disasters. So I don't think I, I don't know if I would go the literal route, you know, I imagine that kind of being a metaphorical way in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your line again, Eric? Say it again. Oh, swept in the whitewash, you were reaching out your hand. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so who's who's the speaker? I I guess I probably from the rescuer's perspective or okay. Or or maybe maybe even some other person, maybe some Here's person somewhere. watching in on the scene from the you know, from uh -huh. the outside of the image. I think it's probably like that. I I don't really see myself as dangling from chains to rescue somebody. I mean, not that I wouldn't if I could, but not that I, you know, I would if I could, but it just doesn't speak to my kind of situation. So hmm. mm. who else wants got, to share? I got real literal in fair. I did a, a fish. She needed a hero to slow her down. He promised to hang around and see. Hmm. Nice. That's a country nice. western song. Um, <laughs> uh, and then I'll kind of went from there to I'll hang around until you need me. <laughs> oh, I like that one. Um, so it, the onus is on is on her a bit, huh? Mm -hmm. Or on the, the to be rescued. Yeah. I like, I, in that I case, like... be, I'll hang around until you're willing to need me is actually better. <laughs> that sounds like a country western song. <laughs> Calling Dolly uh, now. I hang around. <laughs> that's and that's I, actually what I was trying to get at. That that he's he, he's holding out his hand, but the future won't happen until she reacts to it. So right. My, my hand will be your bridge. That's that's what I was trying mm -hmm. to say. Yeah. Which and I then like I went kind of. I got what uh, Eric was saying about it not being too like not being literal. Um, like at winter's end, springtime floods engulf me. Mm -hmm. ah. I wrote, um, let me help you live. Oh. Mm. There will, ah. there will be no drowning today. And oh. these rapid waters swallowing me. Yeah. Hmm. Let me help you live. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Before it's too late. Uh -huh. That's. Huh. And I, I was thinking how sometimes we don't want the person who rescues us. We want someone else. But <laughs> you get you get who comes. You know. <laughs> uh -huh. That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's turn, a, yeah, that's turn a good down. One. <laughs> He looks uh, he looks like a pretty solid I I I brought him to save me. <laughs> I was gonna say he fits the stereotype. Bruce Springsteen saves the day, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's always I think that you know doing going to therapy and healing from codependency like really fucks you up to write a love song. I'm just saying. Because you, you you're like you can't like I'm hanging around for you to need me. That's so codependent, you know. <laughs> Oops. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did uh, Susan? Did you share or Adam? Do you want to? Uh, share? I can share. Um, I think I went kind of. I'm a visual person. Um, I went kind of literal, and I was definitely the one in the water. Um, 
not hanging on, hanging on a chain somewhere. Um, so I went, I did like two versions and it got, it got kind of rhymey. Um, wall of water rolling down. Who's going to save me? Will I drown? Oh. Um, and then I said, and then I did the other version was tumbling under, rolling down. Who's going to save me? Will I drown? Nice. Mm -hmm. some some good verbs it's really terrifying Tumbling. i mean the idea of being the person in the water is so terrifying to me yeah it's more terrifying than the one going down yeah i think mm -hmm. i think so i don't know it's a terrible responsibility to be the rescuer you know uh yeah i guess but everybody well, I, forgives you because you've tried, you know? <laughs> like if the person dies, it's like, oh, well, you tried your best. <laughs> it's so interesting I, to me that with this photo that we all take it in different directions and we have different mm -hmm. feelings about the characters. Yeah. 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 I, I was and looking. It, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I was looking for good action pictures, like the Pulitzer Prizes, but they're all in wars. It got really depressing. So I mm -hmm. had to find one that was just about water and not, not guns. Battling nature. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you were going to say, Miss Boy? Um, I was just thinking about how a lot of these lines, you know, when I was writing poetry as a teenager, and as teenagers write poetry and songs, there's that teenage angst that we don't have anymore, thank the goddess. But um <laughs> Well, maybe we don't express it anymore. Well, yeah, I guess, but it it, it is something about that um that purity of that angst that goes with that time of your life, you know? Mm. And it's less cynical than angst later in my life. <laughs> That's and interesting, how does, yeah. How does that relate to this picture? Well, I was just thinking about the lines that we've written, you know, the all of the lines that everybody said had would fit in a teenage angst poem, oh. you know, or a teenage angst song because of the rescue thing and because of the, you know, knight in shining armor thing and because of the I'm drowning like you do when you're a teenager, you know, like <laughs> everything drowns you. Yeah, so I was, how, I was how saying- would you I, turn the Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, Eric, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I, I, going off of Boy's point, I, I feel that too, that uh, that that I was like, you know, yeah, as a teenager, I might have written more lines about drowning or being flooded or being swept away or not knowing what to do and being overwhelmed, you know, mm -hmm. but now it's kind of hard to, it's a little harder to go to that same place. Um, but anyway, what, what were you saying, Anna? Well, I was just thinking, like, how do you turn um, it on your, on its head and not make it about the rescuer all right i mean the the person who's who's in the water is in distress likely uh -huh. i would say that's a pretty fair thing but like how do you how do you turn it on its head so that you can find a new idea from this picture um he stretched out his hand and i chose to live yeah and you know it's interesting because that gets to the male thing so how do we move it away from that like make him a they i don't know make him mm -hmm. a human instead of a guy a oh then guy. i would use you that's the thing i would use you you stretch you stretched out your hand mm -hmm. and i chose to live yeah and then that's more universal mm -hmm. Or you just talk it, about the water, which is where I mm -hmm. started, and then I got mm -hmm. right where I was like, wall of water rolling down, or tumbling under rolling down, but then I suddenly got rhyming. Mm. Well, you set yourself a good rhythm that went with rhyming. <laughs> I guess. Adam? I guess. <laughs> Did you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I mean, these are wonderful um, lines, and... I didn't have anything profound, but I um, finally thought of something. 
Um, okay. My lines are, I couldn't see you, but I knew you'd be the one to pull me through. I don't know, that's about all I could come up with, but it's it's an amazing like exercise. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I have to say that as feminist as I am, if I were that person drowning in the water, worrying that it's stereotypical that a man is trying to rescue me would be the last thought in my head. Oh, I would, yeah. I would grab that hand regardless. It sounds mm -hmm. like that's a, that's a great topic for a song in and of itself, you know. <laughs> yeah. I just mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of humor and potential for humor and oh, and yeah. wit there, you know. I'll make a note of that, Eric, for sure. You know. Yeah. I was I was going to say on on this subject of um adolescent angst, uh, that you know th that is true. Now that you bring it up, I, uh, the older I get the less willing or inclined I am to lay my emotions out there. I, that's that's why I probably retreat behind humor or, you know, think factual mm -hmm. situations rather than, you know, being an emo, what they call emo sort of uh, expression. So that's something. Right. You know. Well, I was going to say we have about five minutes left. So if, uh, does anyone have any questions either about the songwriting activity or just general questions for Joanne before we wrap up. I just want to say you guys are great. What great ideas. This is so wonderful to collaborate. Now I'm I so sad. I'm now so I sad I missed the it. first half hour. Damn. <laughs> now I see how those songwriters in Nashville all get together in a room and Sorry? write a song. No, I didn't know it was open. Um, yeah. <laughs> Have you yeah, ever was, done? I, um, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, well, I was going to say, have you ever done collaborative songwriting before, Joanne? I never have. Okay. I think yeah. that would be a fun exercise um, to that's, to that's do that. Doing. That's what we're doing yeah. right here. We're sharing ideas. This is really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Almost you know, like we're yeah. in a band. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Joanne. When I think about your song. Um, the visiting hour and I think the power in that song knows when when I cried you know when I heard you sing it and it made me cry because you touched on something that was so we all know it even though you know it's just it was so raw it was beautiful Thank you. and <clears throat> maybe this thing is also that it's like looking for inspiration at the point of connection and need you know we're in despair and then we think we're all's lost and then it's not you know it's like beautiful are you talking about us being here together or are you talking about this picture i'm talking about all of it <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> it's a it's a big jumble it's a big ju damn jumble but it's like <laughs> it's like it's like when you can really show up and be um be raw like that and recognize we're all humans here and sometimes we're the rescuer and sometimes we're the rescued and oh, that's you know it's just like god it just goes around that's a great uh, line there too i right? was gonna say i think there's a song right there <laughs> yeah sometimes we're the rescuer and sometimes we're the rescued yeah yeah that's, serious. that's great hmm. Well, I guess then we should probably oh, wrap goodness. things up for this was totally delightful for this thank community you. conversation. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. thanks so much for coming, Joanne. Joanne, and thank for, you. My pleasure. This was a lot of fun. Thank awesome. you. And and we'll um we'll clean this up and uh, uh -huh. get it uploaded to YouTube and and let oh. you know. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And then and then you can uh, share that with. Uh, all your friends and family as well. Oh. Will it show? Um, hey, hey. Yeah. We'll, yeah. Yeah, it does. Work. Yeah. Cool. I'm like, hey, listen, okay. I took Nicole's and I got rolling bags and lots of feet. You're carrying too much stuff. I hope I get an extra seat, my love, and my love for you's enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm not sure she's still here. You should email that to her, maybe. 
I can see her. <laughs> okay. What's um, that? That, did, that did, I took your two lines and made a verse out of it. That's cool. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> I'll send it to you. All right. <laughs> My brother Ray, we're just wrapping up. I'm glad you rejoined, but we're not finished. I'm glad you could come for part of it. It's my brother Raymond who just joined. Yay. Yeah. Well, Joanne, this was fantastic. You should really mm -hmm. do this sort of thing again. I think it would be, you know, I, I mean, it. facilitating songwriting activities for folks, be it us or elsewhere, you know. So I learned, I learned so much. You guys are the best. All right. We could do a songwriter circle. Yes. Absolutely. All right. All right. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks, Ren. Thanks for coming, Adam. Thanks for coming. Love Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you to our Arts Park Texas funders, Texas Commission on the Arts, St. David's Foundation, Cultural Arts City of Austin Economic Development, National Endowment for the Arts, Creative Forces, Austin Public Library. Donald D. Hamill Foundation.